Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Haley Estes. I vlog at themountainviewcottage.net where I share farmhouse inspired DIY decor and organization videos. Today we are moving back to this dresser. So far we have prepped it for paint. We have painted it with a dark gray chalk paint. We've gone over a couple troubleshooting tips and today we're gonna go over all things distressing. I'm gonna show you how I like to distress my furniture this is not a one size fit all, something that you may like, I may not like, and vice versa. So this is just the way that I distress my furniture, and I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. As always, give it a thumbs up if you do and follow my channel for more videos just like this one. I am doing an entire course on an introduction to painting furniture. Those videos go live on my channel every Thursday at 6 a.m. Mountain Standard Time and they have a corresponding post on my blog. So be sure to check those out and if you're waiting for the next video, don't worry, the next one will be up on Thursday. So let's get started on distressing. The first and most important item of business before you begin distressing is to make sure that your furniture is completely dry. Make sure that it is by touching it. You can feel that in some areas it is still cold. That means that it's not completely dry yet. You maybe need to wait another 30 minutes until it is completely dry. The next thing that you need to keep in mind is what is this project for and how do you ultimately want it to look? This project for me is gonna be going in my boys' room. Their room is not ultra rustic or shabby chic looking, so I'm gonna do a very minimal distressing on this piece of furniture. I'm not gonna overly distress it. I usually don't with most of my furniture anyway. So this is going to be a conservative approach to distressing furniture. I am only gonna use two tools to distress this particular piece of furniture. I never use an orbital sander regardless of what I'm distressing because it really overly distresses very quickly. I'm gonna use a foam sanding block. This has a medium 80 grit on it. I find that the foam sanding blocks tend to be a little less coarse than the actual packaging says. So an 80 grit sanding block isn't gonna be as coarse or as harsh as the sanding pads, but I'm also gonna use a very fine, a 220 fine sanding pad. I'm gonna use these together and I'll show you how I go ahead and distress this. I'm gonna start with the edges of the piece. I personally like to start at the top and work my way down, and I'm just going to distress the edges. It is not likely that a naturally worn piece of furniture that's old and vintage would distress on the flat surfaces. That is where you're going to start having problems and it's gonna start looking overly distressed very quickly. I typically stray away from distressing on the flat surfaces at all. If anything, I will use a very light hand to smooth those areas out if they're a little bumpy or rough or textured, but I do not like to distress it to the point that the paint has completely been worn away by distressing and you can see the wood underneath. I am just going to stick to the edges of my piece and that is usually a general rule of thumb that I keep for all of my pieces of furniture that I paint. So let's start with the foam sanding block and kind of see how it works. I have this as a backup because sometimes the foam sanding block is not enough to really distress at all. I will go ahead and put my little sanding pad on top of it and use this as a place to grip my sanding pad a little bit better if the foam sanding block isn't enough. So that's just a little hack that I have for you guys. So I'm just gonna rub my foam sanding block right along the edge. And I can already kind of tell that this isn't gonna be enough. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put my fine sanding pad on top of it and use that to distress a little bit better. You can see how quickly that starts distressing once I add this to it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that along the entire top of my dresser. Once again, I'm using a light hand because I do not want it overly distressed. This area that pops out, this detail piece, I'm gonna go ahead and distress that because that is an area that would naturally distress over time. Is 
chalk paint, you can see that there's some areas, like when I touch it, that it starts to look white or lighter colored. That's gonna go away once I finish this piece, so you don't really need to worry about that. Really what I'm striving for is these areas where the wood is showing through. what the dresser looks like once I've completely finished distressing it. You can kind of see as I get up close how not every single square inch of the edges has been distressed down to the wood, just some of the areas. And that is exactly what I'm going for. Like I said before, I think less is more when it comes to distressing. You can always paint over it if you distress a little bit too much, but that can get a little bit tricky. So my general rule of thumb is to do a little bit less and keep it simple, you'll end up with a beautiful piece of furniture that has been distressed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will be back next Thursday for the last video for this dresser and then we'll be moving on to a different medium of furniture paint, which is milk paint. I can't wait to share it with you guys.